Lesson 3.5 Linear Models Linear models are used to represent real-world situations. Models can be represented in multiple ways. Tables, equations, graphs. An example of something that can be represented using a linear model is a paycheck. Imagine that you work as a magazine subscription salesperson. You make $100 a week plus $5 per magazine subscription you sell. A linear model can be used to represent your paycheck at the end of the week. In order to model your paycheck, you make $100 per week plus $5 per magazine subscription. We can model this situation with a table. Oops. So we can have number of subscriptions. sold, and amount of pay. If we sell zero, we will get our $100 for the week. If we sell one magazine subscription, we will get that $100 plus our $5, so that will be $105. If we sell two magazine subscriptions, we add another $5. For 110. Three magazine subscriptions gives us 115. And four magazine subscriptions would give us $120 for the week. We can model our paycheck with a graph. If we assign the x axis to be the number of subscriptions and we sign the y-axis to be our weekly pay. We'll start with x at 0 and y at 100. Each of these lines will be going up by five dollars so we'll have 105, 110, 115, 120, etc. And each of these lines will be representing one subscription. So if we sell zero, we make $100. If we sell one, 105, 203, 115, 420, etc. And we'll get a line that continues. in this fashion. We can model with an equation. We're going to get $100 per week plus $5 per magazine subscription. So that's times the number of subscriptions. If we say that Y is our weekly paycheck and X is our number of subscriptions, Y will equal $100 plus 5 times the number of magazine subscriptions. So here is our linear model in an equation. Here's another example. A faucet is dripping at a constant rate and it fills a test tube with 0.4 milliliters of water every minute. We're going to form a table of values for time and capacity and then determine an equation and represent it graphically. So we'll need a graph. Here's our table. We have minutes and we have milliliters. At zero minutes, we will have zero milliliters. No water will have dripped into the test tube. At one minute, we will have 0.4 milliliters. At two minutes, another four milliliters, so we will have 0.8 milliliters. At three minutes, another 0.4, so we'll have 1.2 milliliters. At four minutes, we'll have 1.6. At five minutes, we'll have two milliliters. 
six minutes will give us 2.4, etc. So we make this x, and this is going to be our y value, so this will be milliliters. Our equation is going to be y is equal to 0.4 times x, because at zero minutes we'll have zero milliliters, and every minute after that we're going to get another 0.4 milliliters. Now this graph is not going to be a collection of just points because in between the minutes we'll get extra milliliters, parts of milliliters for dripping. So one, two, three, four, five, etc. Eventually it would stop depending on the capacity of the test tube. Assuming that the test tube is 25 milliliters and there are 3,785 milliliters in a gallon, how long until a gallon of water was wasted by a dripping faucet? Okay, keep in mind it was 0.4 milliliters per minute. Okay. We need to find out how many, okay, so our equation was y is equal to 0.4x. That'll tell us our minutes. We want to find out how long before there are 3,785 milliliters in a gallon. So how many minutes till that gallon of water is wasted? We'll divide both sides by 0.4. Okay, so x will be equal to 9,462.5 minutes. So one gallon will take 9,462.5 minutes. In hours, we can divide that by 60, and we'll find out that that's 157.71 hours. Okay, so how many hours in a week. There are 24 hours in a day times seven days in a week. So that's 168 hours. In 157.71 hours, we'll get one gallon. So if I take that 168 and I divide it by 157.71, I'm wasting 1.0 seven gallons of water a week. We can figure out how many hours in a month. Now we'll have to figure on a, an average month. So we'll say an average month, 24 hours times 30 days. is 720 hours. We take that 720 and we divide it by our 157.71. And we have wasted 4.6 gallons per month. And if we want to figure out how many hours in a year, we'll do 24 times 365. Eight thousand seven hundred and sixty hours in a year. Oops. So we'll take that eight thousand seven hundred and sixty and divide it by our one fifty seven seventy one. And we are wasting fifty five and a half gallons per year. Okay, we need to be able to identify and interpret the key features of a linear function. So those include x and y intercepts, the domain, the range, intervals when the function is changing, when it's increasing, when it's decreasing, or when it's remaining constant.
and any other information that can be interpreted from the graph. Buying in bulk decreases the price of most items. Let's say you're an event planner and you're buying placeholders in bulk. You find a site that sells them for different prices based upon how many you buy. Identify and interpret the key information from this graph. We have the price per setting, so 35 cents, 40 cents, 45 cents, so these are each one penny, and then the numbers of settings. If we try to buy between 0 and 50, there's no price listed here, so you have to buy a minimum of 50. between 50 and 150, but not at 150. That circle here that's open indicates to 149. They are 47 cents each. Between 150 and 299, see this 300 is not included, they are 42 cents each. Between 300 and 795 here, they are 37 cents each. And then any from 796 up, they are 34 cents each. There are no X or Y intercepts on this particular graph because we don't actually intersect with the X and Y axis. Our domain, our x values, so our domain starts at 50 and then goes on into infinity. So our domain is the set x, and x has to be greater than or equal to 50. Our range are our prices. Our lowest price is 34 cents. Our highest price is 47 cents. So our range is y such that 34 cents is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 47 cents. This is all of our key information from the graph, so we're able to interpret that clearly. Okay, we have average rate of change. Some rates of change are constant and some rates of change change. A constant rating cha of change would be total cost of apples by the pound. So if you buy one pound, they're $1.95. If you buy two pounds, they're $3.90. Three pounds, $5.85. Each time they're going up $1.95. So they're $1.95 per pound. A changing rate of change would be rain collected in a rain barrel by day. Monday, you could collect six inches. By day two, there could be 11 inches. Day three, 13 inches. Day four, 13 inches. Day five, 17 inches. And these are changing every day because the rainfall is not gonna be the same every single day. Okay. Finding the rate of change. The rate of change formula is the same as the slope formula. So it's m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If we have a constant rate of change, we can take any two points. So we could take point 0.1 and point 0.2, and we can call this x1, y1, x2, y2. And our change is going to be 390 minus $1.95 over 2 minus 1, which will give me $1.95 over 1. Now, if we're doing our changing rate of change, okay, all better. Our changing rate of change, our rate of change is going to change every day. Between, between day 1 and 2, I'm going to have 11 minus 6 over 2 minus 1, which will give me 5 over 1. Between days three and two and three, I'm going to have 13 minus 11 over three minus two, which will give me 
2 over 1, 14, or sorry, 13 minus 13 over 4 minus 3, which will give me 0, and 17 minus 13 over 5 minus 4, which will give me 4 over 1. Now, because we have a changing rate of change, we want to find the average rate of change. So we take our first value as x1 and our last value as x2, y1 and y2, and we use those to determine the average rate of change. And we'll have 17 minus 6 over 5 minus 1. That will give me 11 over 4. This would be my average rate of change. So if we do a change in rate of change, rather than calculating all these individual ones, we take our last point and our first point, and that will give us the average rate of change.